Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can practically use Spiral Dynamics to create for yourself a personal development plan that is so powerful that it can literally fix your entire life. And the reason why I think Spiral Dynamics is so powerful is because it is a developmental psychology model that is based on actual empirical research. And what we have discovered through our studies and through our research is that human beings unquestionably go through at least eight predictable stages of psychological development as we grow and evolve as people. So the way this development actually looks is that every single human being starts at beige and then the self expands out into purple and we still keep all the lessons from beige, but we transcend and we go beyond into purple and then we go even further outwards into red, but we include all the lessons from purple and beige. And then after red gets old, we <laughs> transcend outwards into blue and we still keep all the lessons from red, purple and beige. And then afterwards, as blue gets old, we transcend out into orange and then eventually into green, yellow and turquoise. So the reason why this is so powerful to understand is because within you, there are these underlying value systems that are secretly governing your entire life. So if you can understand how all of these value systems are functioning within you, then you're going to be able to see um, which ones are functioning in a healthy way and which ones are functioning in a dysfunctional way. So I have actually have a quote here from Ken Wilber. Uh, I just wanted to first of all tell you that all of this information, none of it is mine. I wanted to give credit to the creators of Spiral Dynamics, Claire Graves, Don Beck, and Christopher Cohen. All of this research is their research. And I also wanted to give a lot of credit to Ken Wilbur, who took many different developmental models, not just Spiral Dynamics, but also Jane Lovinger's Ego Development Theory, um, Gebser's uh, Stages of Faith, also Carol Gilligan's Stages of Moral Development, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. We basically brought them all together and I have a quote for you from his book, Religion of Tomorrow, just so that you understand where this information is coming from. I think that's very important for just grounding this talk so we see, okay, what is actually going on here uh, as I'm sharing this information with you. So quote, there are several dozen developmental models now available. Virtually all of them focus on one or two developmental lines, either cognitive, emotional, aesthetic, moral, interpersonal, spiritual, and so on. So a developmental line is just a line upon which a human being can grow. So you can grow in the musical line, in the spiritual line, in the relationship line, in the cognitive line. So these are all lines that human beings can grow upon. And we have developmental models that show with research how the human beings grow up through these lines. So we study human beings as they grow and develop through those lines. They usually create tests or metrics that they administer to people to help to determine where they are, they are at in this development. And then they attempt to discern the structure or pattern of the various stages through which all people seem to move, the various levels of that particular line. They arrive at their models by studying and testing real humans and then theorizing from there. And Ken Wilber says, that's an important approach but it is not the approach that integral meta theory takes rather integral takes all of the major developmental models and puts them all on the table, then compares and contrasts them all from that. It creates a model of all these models or a map of these maps, a meta model or meta map. 
using all the models to fill in the gaps of any of them. The result is a super map, a super model, a composite or integrative map or model covering all of the bases touched on by each of them and leaving out none of the fundamental elements. In integral psychology, I list over 100 different models that are all used to create the integral meta model. And this means that this model is definitely inclusive and comprehensive. Unlike any single model, it covers all the central bases. All right, so that's a kind of a long winded quote, but I just wanted to really ground and show you that this information is coming from mountains of evidence and psychological research. And what we're doing is we're using all of the research to actually create a practical plan for ourselves by understanding uh, this, this growth process and how it happens within us. So normally all growth is transcend and include, like I said, so each stage transcends the previous stage. It goes beyond it, but it also includes all the stages before it. So let's say green were to arise. Green doesn't get rid of orange, blue, red, purple, or beige, but it actually includes all of them and embraces them in a, a bigger and wider circle of embrace. Now, the problem is that sometimes during this growth process, something can happen that prevents the healthy development of any one of these stages within yourself. And I'm going to be showing you today how you can determine in yourself where maybe in yourself, you, you notice that your purple is not well integrated or your red uh, is not well integrated. And if any of these stages are functioning in a dysfunctional way, then that's going to create a lot of practical problems in your life, which is what we're going to be talking about here. So a failure to transcend creates an addiction, whereas a failure to include creates an allergy. All right. And we're going to be talking about that, how that looks for every single stage. If you can, if you want a visual for it, imagine that this is your growth. I already showed you how healthy growth looks. This is how unhealthy growth so looks. So let's say there's some kind of traumatic event that happens at beige, then all the other stages that grow on top of beige won't be able to go beyond beige. They're going to be stuck at beige. And this is how your growth is going to look. All the stages can't go beyond beige. So you're for the rest of your life in all these other areas. So maybe in your relationship area, you're at blue, maybe in your cognitive area, you're at blue or, um, in your self esteem area, you're at red, right? But for the rest of your life in this beige area, which is, could be your food or your diet, then for the rest of your life, you're going to be stuck at beige. You won't be able to get to go beyond that. And this can happen at every single stage. It can happen at purple, red, blue, orange, and so on. So as you can imagine, that creates some big problems for your personal development, which is exactly what we're going to be covering right now. A practical example of how this would look is, um, I remember when I was a little kid, I maybe was like two years old. I remember uh, my mom used to force feed me uh, spinach or it was like rapini and she wasn't, she wasn't rude about it. And, and, uh, she wasn't overly forceful about it, but I just remember I really didn't want to eat the greens because they were very bitter. I hated the way that they tasted, but my mom wanted me to be healthy. So she said, eat, eat you. So she would feed me a whole plate of rapini and I really did not like how it tasted. And then for the next eight or 10 years of my life, as I grew up, I was basically quote unquote allergic to rapini where I would smell it. And then that would kind of remind me of that time when I was two years old, which was like a traumatic event for me 
that um, I, I would think of that time where I, I really hated eating that rapini, but I was forced to eat it. I felt helpless. That traumatic event would um, recur in my mind. And whenever I would see rapini or um, I would eat it, um, it would cause a gag reflex in me. And uh, for, the re for the next 10 years, I was avoidant of it, basically. And I wouldn't want to eat it. So that's just a practical example of how uh, if you have a traumatic event, which is defined by Wikipedia, is tra psychological trauma is damage to a person's mind as a result or of one or more events that cause overwhelming amounts of stress that exceeds the person's ability to cope or integrate the emotions involved, eventually leading to serious long-term consequences. So that's from Wikipedia. And I think every single one of us has trauma as we grow up. Even if you didn't have abusive parents, my parents were very loving and not abusive at all. But if, if you just had like a, a normal upbringing, every single person can have a traumatic event, even if it's something as simple as just being fed vegetables that you don't like. And um, Freud in 1926 mentioned that the essence of, of the traumatic situation is the experience of helplessness on the part of the ego, which is suddenly overwhelmed. So if you can think back to a time in your life where you felt very helpless, that uh, is probably a point in your life where you experience some sort of trauma and for the rest of your life, you're going to be acting it out unless you gain awareness over it, which is what we're going to be going into right now. So let's start with beige very briefly. We're not going to spend too much time on beige, but just it's important to understand that beige is the stage that is most closely associated to food. This is um, the lowest on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the food needs. This is associated with the root chakra. And um, if anything traumatic happens to you when you're in stage beige, you might have a problem with food for the rest of your life where you have a food addiction, where you over overeat, or you have a food allergy like bulimia or anorexia where um, you feel afraid of eating food. Both of these things that are possible. And I'm um, going to just show you a little quote by Ken Wilber, a little quote, it's actually a big quote, by Ken Wilber that demonstrates how this would look so that you get a, a good sense for um, the future stages as we go up to purple, red, and blue, you'll see how um, this, this process of growth uh, might look. So in moving from the oral to the next higher stage, for example, if the self fails to differentiate adequately from oral drives, it will remain identified or fused with those drives, thus developing an oral fixation or oral addiction, constantly substituting food to satisfy other needs and using food to generate comfort. If on the other hand, differentiation and disidentification from the oral stage, which is supposed to happen, goes too far into dissociation and disowning, then the self generates a food allergy and ends up with eating disorders such as bulimia or anorexia. So I gave you a very mild example from my own personal life with my mom feeding me spinach when I didn't want to eat it. Um, Ken Wilber writes in a, in a very uh, academic, difficult to understand way, which is why I'm trying my best here to simplify this information and make it very easy to understand. So basically think to yourself, if you have a food addiction or a food allergy, and this is something that's very serious. Now I understand most of us can overeat from time to time. Many of us use food as a source of comfort. That's for the most part normal. But uh, what I'm talking about here is if you have a serious food problem, like you're 300 pounds overweight and you literally can't stop eating or you're um, 50 or 100 pounds underweight and you can't eat and you can't hold any food in your stomach, then the odds are you have a food addiction or a food allergy, which is usually resultant from a childhood trauma in the beige stage. So in order to fix this, um, the best way is just to become aware of it 
and uh, there's uh, many uh, psychologists and therapists that'll actually help you with this. Um, this is uh, kind of out of the scope of this video. All right, so now let's talk about stage purple. This is where it's going to get more practical. Um, I've got my beige marker here, but purple is associated with sex and emotions. So since purple is um, now the next chakra up, so beige would be the root chakra, purple is associated with the sacral chakra. Now, I just wanted to make a note that this information is not directly part of the spiral dynamics model. What I'm using is the spiral dynamics integral model, which includes a lot of the information from Ken Wilber as well, as he's expanded and added upon these developmental psychology models by cross-referencing them and bringing together all kinds of information. So you won't, you won't like um, Don Beck won't tell you in Spiral Dynamics that purple is associated with the sacral chakra, but it's kind of obvious. Um, Ken Wilber talks about it a lot more. But basically, purple is associated with sex and your emotions. So practically, uh, in your life, if there was a traumatic event uh, in your childhood that occurred with sex, a purple addiction might look like the objectification of sex. So the if you're a sex addict and you're constantly, constantly thinking about if you're a guy, a male, in, in many cases, men will be very, they will objectify the opposite sex or maybe the same sex as a sexual object. So they'll just think about sex constantly Every two minutes, it's just a sexual thought. That's uh, something that I used to struggle with actually when I was younger. I don't uh, think I've had a specific uh, sexual trauma in my childhood, but I do remember when I was like 10 uh, to 15 years old, I would just watch porn like a monkey where I would watch it like five to 10 times per day and that would uh, cause a lot of dysfunctional problems in my social life as well. So the, um, the purple addiction uh, would be you just fantasizing about sex constantly every two minutes. Or for females, if you're a woman and you're watching this, um, the female brain trends more towards the uh, having the romantic fantasy where the man is objectified as a success object as opposed to a sex object. And uh, the men objectified as the success object will, um, the woman will just fantasize about him as the knight in shining armor, uh, coming away to take me away and to save me and to bring me to, to the beach and to um, lavish me with material goods and, and pleasure. So uh, that's uh, kind of how the, the female fantasy uh, might look, whereas the man is ob objectified as the success object. So the allergy to purple, uh, if you're repressing sex or you're avoiding or denying sex, um, that uh, is very common as well, especially in women. Uh, women uh, sometimes feel like they're going to be slut shamed for expressing their sexual needs. And that um, is going to cause a lot of problems for them in their emotional life. And uh, men have this other form of purple allergy where it's an emotional allergy because um, purple is about sex and emotions. So women will tend to repress sex, whereas men will tend to repress emotions um, where you, you feel like you, have, you don't want to cry in front of people or if you feel sad about something or if you feel vulnerable and weak, uh, that's something that you don't allow yourself to see. So... Keep in mind, um, just go into your psyche, think about whether you have a sex addiction or a sex or emotional allergy. And some of the practices that you can use to implement into your life to actually fix this problem is first of all, to get comfortable socializing and learn how to relate and connect to others. This sacral chakra is about uh, the family, it's about uh, emotional uh, relations, 
connecting emotionally to other human beings. So many of us don't know how to do this properly. I remember when I was 11 or 12 years old and I was going through puberty, I am a very logically minded person where a lot of my energy is stuck in my head very frequently where I'm just coming up with ideas and theories. And this uh, prevented me from relating properly to other kids or I would have trouble relating to girls as well because girls are more emotional creatures and I would be, I'll be stuck in my head in logic fairy tale land. So this would cause a deep feeling of a lack of connection within me. So I had to actually intentionally, as I got older, 14, 15, 16 years old, I had to intentionally learn and train myself how to interact with other people and how to interact with the opposite sex. So when I would go to high school, I would intentionally force myself to do small talk with people. I would go up to people that I didn't know and I would do small talk with them and I would try and relate to them and I would train myself how to um, connect with other people. So that's uh, extremely important, something that you should implement into your life if you feel like you have this purple allergy or addiction. Also, um, to fix this problem, you can explore your own sexuality. So uh, explore sexuality with yourself. Uh, there's no need to overly shame yourself for being a sexual being uh, within the, the NoFap movement. It's very common for men who are experiencing this sexual addiction where they're watching porn five to 10 times a day, they're noticing that's ruining their life, that's ruining their social skills. And then what they'll do is then uh, they'll repress their sex drive where they'll do no fap for, uh, no fap for one year where I don't masturbate for one year. And uh, that can lead to a lot of sexual frustration that uh, can manifest in a lot of other ways. And uh, I think it's just very important to integrate your purple, to get comfortable exploring your sexuality. Uh, sex is not evil. It's a very powerful drive and is also the source of a lot of our shame and guilt. So um, exploring your sexuality, you can literally masturbate by yourself using uh, Tantra practices, which are, um, you exploring your energetic body, see, actually exploring the sexual energy, see how it moves throughout your body. You can use breathing techniques, look into Tantra and um, uh, even Qigong as well and energetic techniques that helps you kind of get a, a, a mastery of your sex drive that can help you integrate purple. And um, another way to integrate this, this purple is just to connect uh, with nature as well, so you can go on a, a camping trip with your friends, uh, hang out in nature, socialize, have friends, uh, have uh, social relations, a social group, a tribe is very important to give you that feeling of connection um, that many people who don't integrate their purple properly are missing. And uh, also connect deeply to your emotions, allow yourself to feel your emotions fully and even to look into the world of psychedelics as well. Uh, those are all great ways to um, integrate your inner stage purple. All right, now let's talk about how to integrate stage red into your life in a healthy way. Stage red is the power stage that's associated with the solar plexus chakra. This is about movement, direction, drive, strength, force, and also that killer instinct within you, that primal raw power that is within all of us. And if you are addicted to stage red, meaning you're clinging to it, that could mean that you become abusive, you become violent, you have the drive for power over others, you become authoritarian. This is kind of like the abusive boyfriend who is trying to control every single aspect of his girlfriend's life and to, and to exert power over her. That would be an addiction to red. 
Whereas the red allergy would look like you're afraid of being powerful. You're afraid of asserting yourself. You're afraid of setting boundaries. You're afraid of being strong and being in your power, right? So uh, the, the red allergy is very common with women where um, for generations, women have been forced to give up their power to men. So we have this, the women have this generational trauma where we feel afraid of, of speaking our mind, exerting our, our power, being seen, having our voice be heard. Um, and that's, uh, that's an example of, of a red allergy, which is very common in women, but also in men. If you're a mama's boy, if you're um, a milk -a toast or I don't even like that word, milk -a toast that, that, that's what Ken Wilber calls it. But if you, if you fail to exert your own power, then that would be a red allergy. So some really important practices for cultivating your internal stage red, which is super important because red is that drive. It's that force and that power that moves you to get things done. Then uh, one really important practice is weight training. So if, if you're a guy or even a girl, if, if you lift heavy weights, that's going to really tap you into that primal instinct within you, that, that personal power. It's gonna make you feel physically strong. And if you feel physically strong, that also helps you be psychologically strong as well. Another great practice is martial arts. So if you uh, take up Muay Thai, or I remember when I was in high school, I was on the wrestling team. And I remember that really made me feel uh, super powerful and strong because wrestling is you're basically just fighting another person to the death. So I, I really felt that strong primal drive where it's just uh, you, you win, you put your opponent on their back at all costs, whatever you have to do. If you got to bang heads together, if you got to use elbows, you need to <laughs> win at all costs. Or it's like this primal life or death kind of drive. Uh, martial arts really help you with that. Also, um, sports as well. So if you, I used to also play soccer and rugby. Rugby is an awesome example that really helps me integrate my stage red where uh, rugby is like an all out war on, on the field. It's like just, just the, everyone's just tackling each other and there's cleats flying everywhere and there's jerseys being pulled and kids are being thrown around. So um, rugby is very violent, aggressive, but that also really helps you feel powerful and to integrate your internal stage red. So those are all practices you should implement if you've been feeling weak or if you've been feeling um, overly domineering and authoritative. The reason why is because you don't have a, a healthy outlet for your red energy. So these healthy outlets like weight training, martial arts, and sports are going to help you kind of get your red out to embrace it fully and that'll allow you to include it and give you a lot of power that helps you achieve your goals. Also for me, I love listening to rap music as well. So I love listening to Eminem, Biggie. There's a lot of stage red energy there. Uh, Eminem talks about murdering his wife. Um, but this, this kind of raw aggression uh, this really helps me tap into that internal stage red whenever I feel like I'm, I'm lacking drive or motivation or I'm lacking killer instinct, then uh, get it, listening to that music to pump myself up uh, really helps me personally, like when I'm working out. And also, um, yeah, just take your power back. Realize that your life is your responsibility. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Your whole life is your responsibility. All right, that's that kind of selfish, red, individualistic sense, which is very important for integrating your power. All right, now we're gonna talk about how to healthily integrate your stage blue, which is associated with discipline. So if you're someone who's been struggling with discipline, with consistency, with following a routine, or also if you're someone who's been feeling meaning, like your life is meaningless and you have no higher purpose to strive for, 
then it's very important that you work on integrating your internal stage blue. Um, so blue is associated with that higher purpose, deeper meaning, rules, routine, um, also the mastery process is associated with stage blue and uh, blue addiction would look like if you're someone who is overly rule focused, rule based, where you can't break your schedule, otherwise you have a panic attack or every single thing in your house needs to be perfectly organized and clean. Otherwise you, you get mad and you kick your dog. So if, if you're someone who's very anal a neat freak, if you're very rigid with your rules, that would look like a blue addiction. Also, if you're someone who is deeply sucked into a specific ideology, whether that be a religion or a conspiracy theory or a political view, right? These are all examples of ideologies. And if you have failed to embrace and transcend blue in a healthy way, and you're still clinging to your blue, then what happens is you can become very absolutistic about your view thinking that, oh, my view is the one right view. Oh, Christianity is the one right religion. And then you go around and you try converting people and uh, demonizing all the other people who don't agree with you. This is also the same with any ideology, whether it be a conspiracy theory or conspiracy theorists don't call themselves conspiracy theorists. They call themselves truth seekers because, but anyways, it's an ideology. It's just a belief system and you're trying to convert other people to your belief system. And usually that involves demonizing other people who don't uh, agree with what you agree with. It's like, oh, you're just a sheep if you don't agree with me. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But yeah, so whenever you're trying to convert other people, crusading, also if you're like, a, if you're someone who identifies as being a rule follower, if you're a good little boy or a good little girl, then, um, and you always need to follow the rules. You got to follow mommy, follow daddy. You don't, you don't want to break uh, their rules. You don't want to hurt their feelings. Then uh, the odds are you fail to transcend blue, which also has to do with the family. And um, a blue allergy might look like you're someone who has no discipline. You have no higher purpose in your life, no schedule, no routine. Um, you are also, um, this, you can be rebellious where you intentionally rebel against all rules on purpose, just for the sake of rebelling against rules. I remember when I was younger, when I was maybe around eight years old, uh, I experienced a lot of, um, stifle stifling. I felt like the rules, the teachers in my school were kind of putting me in a box because I was a very eccentric kid. I had a lot of weird ideas. I was really funny and uh, I would I like to get into trouble. So the teachers would always discipline me and say, hey, don't do that. You're not allowed. You're a bad boy. Go to the office. And um, that kind of caused me to develop a blue allergy, which is an allergy to rules where I would intentionally rebel on purpose, where whenever there's some kind of rule, I would just break it just, just, just to break it because I saw myself as a, as a rebel. So just because you're not a rule follower, if you're someone who's reacting against rules, that still means that you haven't fully integrated your internal stage blue. You have a blue allergy, which is going to mess up your development. So also if you're someone who's anti-religious and, and whenever you see spirituality or religion in any form, you automatically demonize it saying that, oh, this is bullshit. This is not even worth studying. It's just fairy tale superstition. See, then again, you haven't healthily integrated your stage blue. Uh, I was someone like that. I thought anyone who believed in religion was just a, a childish, a superstitious person who doesn't know how to use logic or rationality. But as I got older and I uh, expanded my horizons. I started studying religion. I started studying Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, and other forms of spirituality. Then that actually helped me integrate my blue and realize that not all religions are literally true, but they do have a deeper metaphorical truth, which is important. And you don't want to miss out on that. All right. 
So um, some practices that you can implement into your life to healthily integrate your stage blue drives is to develop a strict morning routine. So this is something that I had to do for myself. I uh, was someone who has no schedule at all. I just kind of wake up in the morning and say, okay, what am I going to do today? And, I, and then I have no schedule at all. That's because I personally don't like having a schedule because I feel like that kind of boxes me in and that uh, kind of uh, limits me. I feel like schedules limit me. Um, but what I realize is that um, it's important to develop a morning routine that you stick to. So a specific time that you wake up and you wake up at that time every single morning. Let's say at 8 a.m. you set your alarm and every single morning you wake up at 8 a.m. and you do a specific regimen. So maybe you exercise first thing in the morning and then you meditate and then after you drink some lemon water or something. And then that's your morning routine. By developing something like that and sticking to it on a daily basis and developing that consistency, that is going to help you achieve your higher vision, which is very important uh, to develop as well in uh, for implementing your stage blue. It's important to develop a higher vision for your life, a deeper meaning for why you're alive. In our society, we... Um, have a whole soup of all these different perspectives. We have science, we have religion, we have conspiracy theories, we have spirituality. It's like we have all these perspectives all available to us all at once, but we don't know what is the deeper meaning of life. So in stage blue, normally uh, what would happen is you would have this one religion and then that one religion would serve as the highest meaning of life. But in my opinion, that doesn't really work anymore. In the 21st century, we have the internet. There's no way you're going to be able to believe in just one religion and to exclude all the other ones. That's very childish to do that. Instead, what I recommend is developing your own life purpose, developing your own deeper meaning for your life, journaling about what is the most important thing to me in life. What kind of life do I want to create for myself? What is it that I want to achieve in my life? What's most important to me? What's the highest value for me in my life? So in the future, I'll go over some of these journaling exercises. You can check out my video, getting crystal clear about exactly what it is you want in your life. In that video, I go over um, the process of developing clarity about your purpose in your life, which is what is going to allow you to keep your discipline. So if you're someone who's been struggling with discipline, the reason why is because it's not meaningful enough for you. Your goal isn't meaningful enough for you. It's not important enough. If you have some goal, like, oh, I want to make a bunch of money, but it's, it, it's not connected to your heart. Blue is also associated with the heart chakra. If your goal is not connected to your heart and it's just kind of some vague idea that would be nice, then you're not going to be able to develop the consistency, the discipline and the work ethic, which is all of which are stage blue qualities that allow you to reach up to this higher vision and achieve it. So um, uh, the work ethic is uh, very uh, important to develop in stage blue, which just means working consistently. Figure out some area of life that you want to master that could be speaking, could be marketing, it could be art, it could be um, creating video games, whatever that is for you. Develop a practice regimen where you practice consistently every single day. For one hour, you plug away at your chosen skill. And what that does is that helps you develop mastery. So um, if you can think of like uh, the Kung Fu masters in uh, the, the Eastern, in China, the Kung Fu masters, they're very strong stage blue, very strong discipline where you wake up at 4 a.m. every morning, you follow the rules, you follow the, the tradition, you train for four hours in, right in the morning in a specific way. So there's a lot of attention to detail in stage blue. One uh, part of my life that really helped me develop a good discipline and work ethic 
was joining the army cadets when I was 13 to 16 years old. I was in the army cadets where uh, you have to have your uniform in sh pristine condition. There can't be wrinkles on your uniform. Your collar needs to be fixed. Your beret needs to be formed properly. Um, your boots need to be shined. You need to behave according to the rules. You need to uh, follow the, uh, the correct protocol when it comes to saluting properly or when someone asks you a question, you need to respond yes sir or yes corporal or you need to respond with their rank. You need to stay in line. So the army is a great way to um, really build that discipline within you. Although um, I don't recommend going to war. I don't think that's a really helpful use of your life. But um, you can always join a militia where you can uh, actually um, not go to war, but you can still be part of the reserves where you still do military training, but you don't actually fight in another country. Um, that's a great way to build discipline. If you're someone who really struggles with this, then joining the military is actually a great way to build your own um, self-esteem and, and to build your, um, your discipline. Yeah, so organization as well. That's very important practice for blue. Get your environment organized. Clean your house. Clean your room. Clean your mind as well so you can do journaling exercises, which I'll talk about in a future video, but just organize your mind. Write down, what are all the things I need to buy? What are all the uh, chores I need to complete? What are the things that I've been putting off that have been eating away at my attention that I can just hurry up and finish so that I don't have to worry about it anymore? So getting your physical life organized and also your psychological life organized is a great way to integrate your stage blue. Also um, having a schedule, working hard. So this uh, developing a work ethic specifically for the higher vision, that's the best way to integrate your stage blue. And you're, if you healthily integrate your red as well, where you have that primal killer instinct, that drive and that motivation, and then you can channel that with your discipline and with your consistency and your work ethic, you can channel all that raw energy into a higher vision, a higher purpose, then really see what we're doing here is we're creating a really rock solid personal development plan. And this is really how you develop yourself into the highest example of a human being by going back into your psyche, seeing which areas of your psyche you're failing to include and to embrace and to master. And then once you, you go back and you master your purple, your red and your blue, now, uh, we, we haven't even gotten to orange and green yet, and you can already see how powerful this is for uh, doing personal development work. All right, so let's talk about orange. So orange is the stage that has to do with self-esteem, ambition, practicality, efficiency, uh, managing your money, uh, being self-reliant, being able to start a business, um, accomplishment, results, these are all words that are associated with your internal stage orange. And I think that many of us, uh, especially millennials and younger people, we fail to integrate our stage orange because we, in our society, in uh, the Western world, like in Canada and the United States and even in Europe as well, our school system and our university system is very strongly in stage green where you need to include everyone's opinion and everyone needs to feel included. Everyone needs to feel equal. And uh, what happens is when we're in school, I remember when I would play uh, house league soccer, I remember that every single kid would get a participation trophy. So when you're playing soccer, even if you sucked, even if you're the worst player on the team, you would still get a trophy saying, hey, uh, you know, you participated, so here's your trophy. That's a very stage green thing to do. Everyone should feel included. But the problem what this does is that this um, alienates your stage orange drive for achievement. 
for legitimate achievement. So in, in my opinion, I don't think you should be getting a trophy if you lost <laughs> because then you're not learning the lesson that trophies are valuable and that if you play well, if you're the best team, if you're the best player, then you actually get a reward, you get a trophy and uh, that's a very stage orange mentality. So in school, for example, if there's a competition, right, and I'm let's say I'm the, uh, the top of the class, I have 99% average, right? I think that it would be great to give the kids uh, a trophy. Say, hey, good job, you got a 99% average, awesome. But what Stage Green says is, yeah, but if that one kid gets the trophy, then all the other kids are gonna feel bad about themselves. See, no, that it's good that they feel bad about themselves. They, they, the other kid's better, he won, he, he has the best marks, okay? So this competition, this drive, this actually pushes people to do better. It pushes people to achieve, to grow, to expand yourself, to, to get results, right? So this is something that a lot of millennials, Generation Z, a lot of us have had not been able to integrate our internal drive for achievement, for being the best. Because in our school systems and in our society as well, there's a, a strong stage green, which uh, kind of doesn't allow this. But anyways, it's not society's fault. This is just the natural flow of the stages. And um, plenty of our society uh, is still very strong stage orange. You know if you have an orange addiction when you find yourself chasing after success, chasing material objects as a source of happiness. So if you're chasing after, uh, you, have, you own 20 Rolls Royce cars and uh, you're chasing after uh, watches and clothes and, and this kind of materialism. There is nothing wrong with having nice things. It's great to have nice things, that's beautiful. I love having nice things. But if you're chasing after it and that this is like, <laughs> you're trying to gain deep satisfaction by filling your internal void with a bunch of sex or with a bunch of expensive watches <laughs> and expensive clothes, then that might mean you have an orange addiction. Also, if, if uh, you're someone who only considers practicality, you only consider the bottom line, where if I give you some advice and, and you say, well, Adam, okay, nice philosophical advice, but what does this have to do with the money I'm going to make? How is this going to help me increase my profits in my business? So now for 40 minutes or whatever, I've been talking about uh, how to integrate spiral dynamics into your life to create a personal development plan. And although this video is very practical, still many stage orange people might say, okay, but how is this going to help me market my business? Or how is this going to help me make money? So this is a very shallow way of looking at things because you don't understand that if you actually master your psychology and you integrate every single stage in a healthy way, then that is going to do wonders for your business. You're gonna have more drive, more discipline, more purpose, more meaning, more everything, <laughs> all right? But uh, Stage Orange might be addicted to that, that practicality. Or if I say, hey, you know, if, if you go on a meditation retreat, you spend a thousand dollars and you go meditate, and you, and you learn how to pay attention to the breath, you learn how to ground your energy in the present moment, you learn how to relax. Many business-minded people might say, okay, that sounds like a giant waste of time. Why would I waste my time doing nothing when I could be working? I could be getting ahead uh, and, and outworking the competition, but instead, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out here in the forest meditating. That's uh, Orange not really understanding the, the value and benefit of having a grounded and peaceful mind and not realizing that actually helps you be more productive. So also if you have this uh, money over everything, uh, like, you know, it's just, just money. All I care about is, is money and uh, nothing else. That, that could mean you have an orange addiction. And then the orange allergy, which I think is more common in our society, is uh, when you 
have no financial literacy. Uh, this is like uh, the, the hippie who has grown so quickly through uh, purple, red, blue, orange, where the society pulls us up to green, but we haven't had enough time to properly integrate blue and orange. So the hippie, yeah, you know, he's connected to the present moment, sure, but uh, he has no discipline, he has, can't keep a job, he has no money, he doesn't know how to manage and organize his finances, he doesn't know how to make a sale to, to actually improve his financial situation. So that would be uh, an orange allergy. Also, if you find yourself demonizing businesses, or if you demonize people who have money, or, or if you think that the root of all evil is money, or that businesses, the greedy businesses are, are the ones who are polluting the environment, who are ruining a uh, society, that would be an orange allergy. Also, if, if, you, if you find yourself not allowing yourself to express your individuality, if, if you are afraid of um, showing yourself, being out there, putting yourself out there, being ambitious, taking risks, being practical. If you spend too much time stuck in your head doing philosophy, trust me, I've been there, stuck too much thinking about spirituality and, uh, and all these cool new age ideas, but you don't have the practical skills of running a business, then that's going to create a lot of issues in your life and that's an orange allergy where you think everything orange with the world is wrong. Business, capitalism, money, uh, greed, ambition, achievement, all those things are wrong. Really what we need to do is we need to go and we live, live in the forest and meditate. That's uh, an orange allergy, all right? So some practical practices that will help you integrate uh, your internal stage orange drives is to master your finances. So I have recently been listening a lot to podcasts, books, of uh, people that they just help me get my money situation in order. They help me open up savings accounts, learn what to do with my money. Okay, I get income. Okay, great. What do I do with it now? <laughs> so I've been forced to learn about um, investing, saving, and uh, interest, and writing things off, and all, all that stuff. is. I've been forced to learn about that because um, otherwise my money situation is not going to be solid. That requires practicality and, and a results-oriented mindset. Also, building a business is one of the best ways to integrate your stage orange. This is something I'm currently working on right now. So I'm right in the, in the muck of, of this working on building my business. And you'll see within the next few months, the benefits of integrating your stage orange, um, even just uh, over the last uh, maybe seven months, I learned how to be a life coach. I learned how to actually guide people and help transform their lives to help them turn their businesses into careers, to help them uh, deal with their emotional issues and their spirituality. I've helped people with that. And I've learned how to actually sell that so that I can make a living off of it, which is what I'm doing. And there's a lot of benefit to that. Now I'm living on my own. I can make videos as much as I want. And uh, it feels awesome. It feels good as shit. <laughs> so also, um, there's a lot more work for me as well. Just personally, like in terms of business, there's way more room for growth that I see in myself. So that's what I'm working on now. Other ways to integrate stage orange involve... Uh, speaking your mind as well, putting your opinion out there. Don't be so afraid of hurting people's feelings. Don't be so afraid of um, being politically correct. Just speak your mind. And I've seen many people say, well, Adam, society doesn't allow me to speak my mind. People are going to judge me and criticize me. Well, that's not true at all, actually. If you haven't noticed, I'm up here saying some of the craziest shit on earth where I talk about how all of reality is a dream and how God is, you know, the one infinite source of creation and how you are one with that source. 
and that's a that's a hot take, <laughs> by the way. And uh, you know, I I had an angry mob hasn't come to my house and burned me at the stake yet. So society's not holding you back. You're holding yourself back because you're afraid of putting your individual ideas and opinions out there. So that's a great way to integrate your stage orange. Um, don't be afraid of hurting people's feelings. It's okay. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, also, uh, learning about marketing, sales, investing. Also, hiring a coach is a great way to integrate stage orange. That, that is what I've done. I've hired two or three coaches now at this point in my life. And personally, that's helped me just be super practical where I say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm having uh, trouble uh, getting this, uh, this marketing thing up and running. And uh, the coach will tell me, uh, yeah, the reason why is because you're not doing it properly or you're, you're, not, uh, you're using the wrong website or you're not, you're not paying enough money for, for the right service. So that's just very practical and, and that allows me to actually fix that shit for myself. Also taking a personal development course as well. So that again, forces you to be practical. Take a business course, right? Force yourself to think about money, force yourself to be practical and to um, be results oriented. Be competitive as well. Right, so the healthy sense of competition is all right. Now, those are all the ways to uh, integrate uh, stage orange into your life. The best way is just to work on building your own business. And the best way you're going to do that is by building that on top of a foundation of healthy purple, healthy red, healthy blue, where you have that drive, that vision, that discipline. Now that's going to make um, managing your finances or starting a marketing campaign that's going to make that much easier because you have the foundation in place. Many of us, uh, we try and start businesses, but we have no work ethic or we have no drive. We have no sense of personal power. And then it doesn't work. All right, so now let's start talking about stage green. Stage green, green. How to integrate stage green into your life in a healthy way. Stage green is the stage that is associated with human connection, presence, uh, being present, being aware of the present moment in life, connecting deeply to the moment, being compassionate, caring about other people's feelings, caring about the environment, having a fulfilling relationship. These are all things that green really cares about emotional well being, And, um, I think it's very important to learn how to integrate your stage green in a healthy way so that you don't create a green addiction or a green allergy, which will really limit your ability to self actualize. So a green addiction might look like you are overly sensitive to every single thing where somebody says their opinion and it's a hot take. And then you say, Oh my God, that hurt my feelings or, Oh, you're not allowed to say that. Um, because you, uh, that's racist or that's sexist or, or whatever. And, um, this kind of like social justice warrior mentality, um, that could be a green addiction as well. If you notice that in yourself, if someone shares a hurtful opinion with you, then you just get like really offended. I've, I've noticed, uh, as I go to conscious gatherings and like spiritual festivals and stuff, sometimes I interact with a lot of stage green people and I, I'm someone who likes to be very abrasive. I like to poke people's feelings and hurt their feelings. And, uh, I, I can get a lot of reactions out of, out of these uh, people where, um, that would actually be a little bit more of a green allergy uh, that I'm displaying within myself where um, I kind of don't like this, this whole like, oh, I'm so sensitive, overly sensitive mentality. So um, I kind of do the opposite where I have an allergy where I, I like try and poke people's feelings and intentionally hurt their feelings just to like stir them up. That would be an example of a green allergy. 
but another green addiction might be um, becoming totally, completely engulfed in some type, type of cause or movement. So if, if you're into activism and uh, nothing wrong with activism, it's awesome. But if you, if you allow that to kind of overtake your entire life, and then that's like all you think about and uh, all, all your time and energy, instead of focusing on yourself, instead of focusing on discipline, making money and solving your needs, instead now you're kind of worried about saving the whales. While meanwhile, back at home, uh, you don't have a solid relationship or you don't have a solid income, right? So worrying about this, this cause can actually be a distraction, which would be a green addiction. Also, um, virtue signaling is a big one as well. So this kind of politically correct mentality where it's like, Hey, you know, I include everyone. I care about the environment. Really what that's doing is it's called virtue signaling where you're just kind of trying to show everyone how caring you are and how compassionate you are. And the reason why you do that is to gain some kind of selfish advantage, ironically. Also a green addiction, uh, can turn into, uh, over equality of all perspectives where, um, you feel like every single person's opinion is equally valid. And while it is true that every single person has some truth to share and that every perspective should be honored and heard at the same time, that doesn't mean that every single perspective and opinion is equally valid. So for example, um, if I, uh, come up here and I start talking about spiral dynamics, I, in, uh, Western universities, the green meme is very, very strong, right? So let's say I come up here, uh, in a Western university and I start talking about spiral dynamics. I say, Hey guys, you know, this is empirically validated, peer reviewed. There's all kinds of evidence, uh, cross-referencing that suggests that these are the actual stages of human development then, um, someone, let's say in the audience or in the classroom might disagree with me, right? And they might say, oh, well, Adam, you know, that's just your opinion, right? And you don't have to, you know, force your opinion onto me. My opinion is that spiral dynamics is, um, rude. It puts people into boxes. It creates a hierarchy where, you know, green is seen as better than blue. So it creates a hierarchy and then, you know, that's why I don't agree with spiral dynamics and that's my opinion. And I have my opinion, you have your opinion, and then that's it. We both have our opinions. See, this is, it, it's a really toxic uh, pers perspective to take because now it's like, okay, great. You have your opinion. I have my, my opinion, but how do we know who's right? Whose opinion is more accurate? And, uh, the green person might say, well, your opinion uh, or my opinion, nobody is more accurate. There's, there is no such thing as more accurate or more truthful. Everyone's opinion is equally truthful. See, this is a, a big problem because now we're lost in a soup of perspectives and we have no, no organizing principle. We don't know how to organize perspectives in a way so that we can actually start to see the overarching purpose of life. And this creates a kind of nihilism where life seems meaningless because you have your opinion, you have your opinion, he has his opinion, but who's right? We don't know who's right. So there's no guiding force to, um, strive towards. There's no higher purpose or meaning. Now to, uh, to answer that, that question about the, the spiral dynamics, the way I would answer that is just saying, okay, great. That's your opinion that, you know, so you don't like spiral dynamics because it puts people into boxes. But really that opinion is coming from not actually understanding the model properly, because if you study the model for 30 to 50 hours, like I have, I read a 900 page book about the model and, uh, I've been studying it for years now. And my opinion of the model is actually more relevant than your opinion of the model. Because if you're in the classroom and you just heard about spiral dynamics, you maybe heard about it five minutes ago. Okay. You can have an opinion of it. Okay. That's fine. But your opinion is not equally valid. Um, is not equal to my opinion because I'm an authority on this topic. Now just saying I'm not actually a, a spiral dynamics authority. There are many people in the world that know a lot more about it than I do, but compared to most other human beings, I'm an authority 
because I studied it. So my opinion is more important than your opinion because I'm educated on the topic, right? Um, that being said, that doesn't mean I exclude your opinion. I understand where you're coming from on the surface. It does seem like we're creating a hierarchy and we're trying to rank people and say, oh, yellow and turquoise are better than blue and, and red. But when you understand more deeply, you start to see that's not actually what's happening. Really what's happening is there's concentric circles where the higher stages don't demonize and oppress the lower stages, but actually the higher stages include and embrace the lower stages. So it's not that green is better than red, but green actually includes and embraces red along with blue and orange. So green is a higher perspective because it has a, a higher ability to embrace and to include more perspectives, which is a very common misconception. All right, that was a little bit of a rant. Uh, green allergy might look like uh, you're making fun of people who are uh, spiritual. So the, the new age people, they, um, uh, they're interested in, you know, the, the light beings and, and the, the, the astrology and the chakras and the crystals. So there's nothing wrong with that. That's cool. But now you could have a green allergy if you demonize them and, and you'd say, oh, you guys are all idiots. You guys are not interested in science. You guys are, you know, airy, airy fairy, woohoo, uh, soy boys or, or uh, social justice warriors, uh, snowflakes. So whenever you're doing that demonization, that um, could mean you have a green allergy that prevents you from healthily embracing the good aspects of green, which is compassion, connecting to femininity, connecting to other human beings, having... Um, uh, an interest in the emotional well-being of others. Though that's very important. And I'm going to be giving you some practices to implement that. Another green allergy uh, would be like avoiding all spiritual work, thinking that all spirituality is nonsense. Um, avoiding letting loose as well. So if you're like a, a business person who works on Wall Street and you wear a suit and a tie every single day to work, and then you go to a music festival where people are barefoot, they're dancing, they got long dreadlocks and tie-dye shirts, then you might feel avoidant to this crowd. You might say, oh, these, these are all just like weird hippies. Oh, they got, why do they have their shoes off? That guy over there is shirtless. So that, that, that makes you feel uncomfortable. That genuine expression of human, of humanity, that expression of, the, just the pure enjoyment of the present moment where I'm at a music festival, I'm enjoying the music, I'm shirtless, I'm dancing. What's wrong with that, right? That's actually a very blissful experience. Um, but if you have a green allergy, you might kind of be there in the corner wearing your shoes, wearing your suit and your tie, just with your arms crossed like this, just judging everyone saying, ah, oh, yo, you guys are all hippies. Uh, you guys have, uh, you guys have problems. <laughs> That would be a green allergy. Um, also, if you have an inability to express your emotions. Um, also, um, what we talked about triggering people as well, like I like to do sometimes something I'm working on where you like to trigger people on purpose just to kind of expose them. That could be a green allergy. And also demonizing psychedelics. Whenever you're demonizing anything green, anything pluralistic, that would be a green allergy. Now, it's one thing not to agree with stage green values and ideas. Um, that's what I just spent uh, that little rant a few minutes ago. I was talking about the person in the classroom. See, that there's a difference between not agreeing with stage green versus demonizing them as like, oh, you guys are just snowflakes who have no sense of reality at all. And you guys are all idiots, right? That, that's an attitude of rejection as opposed to an attitude of, hey, I hear what you're saying, but you're wrong. <laughs> or you're, not that you're wrong, you're partially um, right, but you're missing a big part portion. 
All right, so some practices for implementing your stage green. My favorite one is ecstatic dance, which uh, is basically you put on some music that usually doesn't have any words, but uh, just kind of very like ecstatic, sometimes tribal, trippy kind of psychedelic music. And um, you basically allow yourself to dance 100%. So 100% you let loose and you allow your body to move any way that it wants to. So if you wanna roll on the floor, you roll on the floor. If you wanna take your shirt off, you take your shirt off. You literally just allow the music to move through you. And this is a very ecstatic experience, since, hence ecstatic dance. This can allow you to let go of a lot of your rigidities, a lot of your um, areas where you're holding back. Um, in general, to integrate stage green, you just kind of need to let go and enjoy your life. Just enjoy the moment and have fun, dance, relax. It's all good. Chill out, smoke a joint, chill the fuck out and relax. A lot of people don't do this and it's actually very important. So psychedelics would be a, a great way to integrate your green. Smoking some cannabis in a healthy way where you're actually honoring the spirit of the plant and you're not just using it to escape your life, but you're actually honoring the spirit of cannabis. Uh, using psychedelics like mushrooms, LSD, going to music festivals, going to Burning Man, hugging people, all awesome ways to integrate your stage green. Give people hugs, connect. If you're a guy and you have guy friends and um, you, I notice in males a lot, there's a, there's a kind of homophobia where men are afraid of expressing love towards other men. Whereas um, what I've been doing, whereas, so for example, um, if, if, I, if, if I was your guy friend and I would try and hold your hand, right, you'd probably say, what the hell are you doing, bro? Are you, are you a faggot? Like, are you, I'm not gay, bro. Don't hold my hand. But like, yeah, why is it gay if I hold your hand? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I'm a 100% heterosexual male. And sometimes I like hugging guys. I like holding guys' hand. I, I give guys shoulder rubs because that's just how I express love. I express love towards other men. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So even a lot of people might be hearing me say this and like, bro, Adam, are you gay? What? Like, it, just relax. Just allow yourself to give love freely, regardless of the gender. I can give love to guys. I can give love to girls. I can give love to anyone, right? As long as they are receptive and I'm not forcing it onto them, right? But if they're receptive, that's, that's very healthy to do that. So some of my guy friends, uh, we hug each other, we hold hands sometimes, and uh, we, you know, we, uh, we are open like that, right? And that's cool, that's okay. That's actually very good to be able to open your heart to express love to other men um, without feeling like you're, uh, like you're being gay, which it doesn't really matter, all right? There's a deep generational trauma where men for thousands of years have been um, per persecuted for being gay, been burned at the stake uh, just for loving another man. So we have this generational trauma. And um, nowadays, if you have a group of guy friends and uh, you come out and, and you are gay, you come out of the closet, then um, your friends might think less of you. Right? They might, they might call you a, a pansy or a, or a pussy. So that's a, that's a generational trauma and that's something that's very important to work on in yourself. Just own your, if you're a guy, own your own ability to express love towards other men and there's nothing wrong with doing that. And going to a music festival like Burning Man or something like that, um, guys hug each other all the time. Big warm, loving hugs, and that's awesome. Very healthy to do that, all right? Also, um, practicing meditation and yoga, great way to integrate your stage green. Connecting to nature also, 
awesome way to integrate your stage green. Um, experiencing a deep relationship and learning about um, intimate relationships. There's a lot of information there about infinite relationships, sacred love, masculine and feminine energy, a lot to learn there. By learning about that, that'll help you integrate your stage green. Um, heal your emotional trauma as well, which we were just talking about a little bit with the, uh, the homosexual trauma. Um, there's many emotional traumas that we have, feelings of unworthiness, insecurity, feeling like we're not enough. Really this whole video that I'm talking about here is about healing emotional trauma in orange, blue, red, purple. So using spiral dynamics as kind of a model to go into your psyche and to see, okay, what am I reacting against or what am I addicted to and, and, and are afraid of letting go and how to kind of reconcile that within yourself. Psychedelics help you do that a lot. Check out my video using psychedelics to heal your mind. And um, also it's, it's in order to integrate your stage green, it, so it's good to just spend some time caring about the environment. I think it's important to uh, be educated and watch a few documentaries about planet Earth, watch some documentaries about the, the meat industry uh, and, and factory farming and the evil that goes on there evil quote unquote, but you know, the, the greed and the corruption that goes on there. And, um, that just helps you be a more informed citizen that actually genuinely cares about the environment, learning how to recycle properly, doing your part, reducing your carbon footprint. Even though I, I realize that, um, the, the biggest issue when it comes to reducing your carbon footprint and global warming, there's an awesome Kurzagat video that I'll link in the description if I remember to which uh, they talk about how there's this kind of fantasy where every single human being is told to do their part where, oh, you have to recycle. It's up to you to solve global warming. Whereas Kurzagat kind of proves where it's not really up to you to solve global warming, but it's up to governments and giant businesses to solve global warming. Because you, if I drive an electric car and if I reduce all my carbon emissions down to zero, that would be like less than less than 1% of uh, reducing carbon emissions. Whereas if a giant company uh, reduces their carbon emissions, that would be more like 10% or something like that. I forget the numbers, but uh, basically they're saying, if you wanna be an environmentally conscious citizen, think about, okay, what kinds of political parties are you voting for? Are you voting for political parties that genuinely are taking the environmental crisis serious and they're interested in regulating business so that the excesses of pollution and cutting corners and dumping in, in the lakes that is cracked down upon with more strictness, which would be more socialist leftist leaning, or are you voting for businesses? Um, are you voting for political parties that are more right leaning that they just say, oh, freedom for everyone, no regulation, you businesses, you guys can do whatever you want, we don't care if you pollute, well, whatever you wanna do, you guys do it, we'll cut all your taxes, and then um, you know we won't be poking our nose in there, because I know you guys don't like when the government pokes its nose into everything, so we'll just let you guys run amok, which is what you've been doing for over 100 years now, and uh, we'll just, you know, continue this whole thing, you know, climate alarmism, like, oh, you know, global warming is not even that big of a deal anyways, right? It's just the scientists are trying to alarm us to get the left in, uh, into power. See, if you vote for that kind of party that has that kind of ideology, that's not taking the problem seriously, then you're contributing to global warming. And you're not caring about the environment in that sense, which is why, so if you actually look at spiral dynamics, the more green leaning people are more environmentally conscious. Whereas when we go to orange, blue, and lower than green, um, there isn't enough care for the environment because the psyche hasn't expanded far enough to um, embrace the entire health and well being of the globe. The psyche in blue and orange is, is, and red is still very selfish. It's really only about me. How can I get ahead? How can I make money? Whereas green is now about, how, what, what about all of humanity? What about the health of, of the globe and for the future generations? 
So it's very important to connect to that to inform yourself about what are good political policies that actually help the well-being of all people as opposed to um, just you know my business or, or my or my family. Sometimes I, I discuss with this in, in forums and uh, people, I, I use a quote, I say, um, what is good for the hive must be good for the bees, which is a Marcus Aurelius quote, where he's just saying, if you are interested in the common good, that is good for you. So if you pass policies and you vote for governments that are interested in giving free health care, free tuition, free dental care, and trying to raise the the um, trying to raise the quality of life for all individuals, then that actually, that helps the collective good and then that helps you, right? So what's good for the hive must be good for the bees. Now the, the stage blue, the conservative, the talking point will be, um, well, you know, that sounds like communism or, oh, you're just trying to take away our freedoms. So, you know, we're not trying to take away your freedoms. We're trying to give you more freedom by so by giving you free health care and free tuition <laughs> so that when you graduate university you're not fifty thousand dollars in debt but now the government has funded your tuition now you actually have an education and you can go get a job without having to pay off fifty thousand dollars of student loans so if you want freedom right you don't want to be a slave to the bank for the for your whole life right the government's trying to help you out the government isn't evil they're not trying to corrupt and manipulate you and take control of you. The government, the job of the government is to help. It, it's an extension of the people. So if you vote for a more conscious government, then you're going to get a more conscious government. <laughs> and that's all a reflection of your consciousness. It's a long point, but let's start to get into stage yellow, which is uh, kind of what I'm talking to now, talking about now, which is the, uh, the integration of all perspectives and bringing together all the stages of the spiral and integrating them into your life in a healthy way so that they function harmoniously. So let's talk about stage yellow. All right, so finally we've made it to stage yellow. This is the last stage that we're going to talk about today because this is the last stage that I think is actually practically relevant. This is going to be very important for you if you're someone who's interested in being a thought leader or you're interested in leading humanity towards higher levels of consciousness and wholeness, then uh, learning about stage yellow is going to really help you with that. Stage yellow is the stage that is interested in integration. So we finally escaped the rat race of the first tier perspectives where we're all fighting and squabbling with each other. Now yellow finally is able to enter being cognition as Maslow called it, or second tier cognition, where now yellow for the first time appreciates the intelligent design of all the previous stages. So the, so for the first time, what, what's happening in first tier is that all the stages are demonizing, hating each other, thinking that, that all the other stages are the, the root cause of all the problems in the world. But yellow for the first time is not interested in demonizing the lower stages. What yellow is instead is interested in is understanding the beauty of human psychological development. Understanding the, the beauty and the intelligent design of the human psychology. And by understanding that helps you create more systemic solutions that are more harmonious, that include all the different perspectives. So it's not that we should just force everyone to move into green but instead what we want is we want to kind of allow people to be where they're at to provide for them to make their stage expression as healthy as possible which is what we're trying to do in ourself so if, if people are in stage red and blue we want them to express red and blue in healthy ways and to limit the the excesses of the unhealthy expression of blue where blue is crusading and and burning witches at the stake or red is murdering and raping people or orange is dumping all kinds of crap into the ocean those would be the toxic expressions of those stages if you can recognize the toxic expressions of those stages within yourself which is what we're doing here in this video uh, learning about the addictions and the allergies that develop 
um, in almost every person as we grow up, up on spiral dynamics, when you fix all these problems in yourself, then that actually puts you in, in a position of leadership where now you're able to um, actually guide other people towards self-actualization, right? Because as you're fixing all these psychological issues in yourself, you're, you're managing your internal stages, every single stage, like um, red, blue, orange, and green, those are kind of like tools that you can call upon whenever they're needed. So whenever you need red, you're going to call upon your red internal primal instinct to get something done. Or whenever you need your blue discipline and work ethic, you can call upon that when it's needed. Whenever you need your orange practicality and, and ambition and results focused mindset, then you can call upon that. Or if you just need to relax, let loose and, and connect to other people, then you can call upon your green. So this is uh, what the word integration means, where all the lower stages are functioning um, in, in a healthy way, right? The word integration uh, means when all parts of a system are working together harmoniously for the, the well-being of the greater goal. In this case, the well-being of you as a person, right? So this is what self-actualization means, tapping into and, and expressing your highest potential as a human being. In order to do that, we need to move into stage yellow by mastering all of the uh, lower stages. So many people listen to me, they'll say, hey, yo, I'm in stage yellow, awesome, right? But hold on, wait a second. It's not about are you in stage yellow or not, it's about how well integrated are all the lower stages within your life. So sure, if your, mind, if your cognitive line is at stage yellow, your mind is at stage yellow, your business could still be at stage red, right? Or you're selling weapons <laughs> or your relationship might still be at stage blue, right? So how, how integrated can we get all of the, the areas of our life and, and develop them properly, which is what Ken Wilber talks about in his book, The Religion of Tomorrow. But all right, so let's, let's talk about uh, what it might look like if you have a yellow addiction, right? So this, is, um, this would look like being trapped in the mind, right? Trying to create all these grand theories of everything, all of these bigger picture context, reading book after book after book after book after book, but not fully like integrating and embodying it. Instead, kind of going off into some like fairy tale, like, some conceptual land where sure you're learning all these awesome things about reality, but then your lower stages, like your sex drive, your relationship drive, your money, none of that's integrated properly, right? So being trapped in the mind, being unwilling to let go of the mind, that'll also prevent you from moving into turquoise. Um, overly conceptual, this can create a paralysis by analysis where you kind of gather together all the perspectives you look at them, but then there's too much information. There's an information overload, and then you don't end up taking any action at all, and nothing gets done. And then a big time uh, yellow problem is having a green allergy. This is a big problem because every stage usually has some kind of allergy to the stage below it because we just came from there. So yellow had to fight and claw its way out of the, the green soup of perspectives, the mess of all the, oh, everyone's equal, you know, there's no higher truth. Yellow has to do a lot of work, personal development to actually climb out of that soup. And then uh, usually what that creates is some kind of green allergy where everything green is seen as limited, um, uh, ungrounded, unscientific. Whereas whenever you get a taste of green, you just kind of scoff, you become very arrogant. Say, oh, you know, all those green people, they're all so stupid. You know, those people are so green, right? They're, if they know about spiral dynamics, then they would be a lot smarter, but they're not as smart as I am because I'm, I'm an integral wizard, right? So uh, I've definitely fallen into that a lot in my life. Um, that's, uh, that would be a yellow addiction. So that would actually be very unhealthy to uh, stay in that. It's very important to be aware of that green allergy. 
Otherwise, um, you 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 can talk and talk about how much you are yellow, but at the end of the day, um, you're still demonizing stages, which really means that you're not fully in yellow yet. Also, um, a, a yellow allergy, which can come from below or from above, from turquoise. Um, but basically what this would be is demonizing the mind in any way, demonizing the process of learning about reality, demonizing the process of learning about um, psychology and history and gathering a, a giant um, uh, mental map and mental model to understand reality. So um, sometimes yellow can be demonized as being the intellectual elite where it's like, oh, you guys, you know, you have all this wisdom and knowledge, but you think you're better than everyone. You think you're so smart. Oh, wow. wow, look at all that knowledge, but you know, you probably have no money. So this kind of demonization of, of the stage yellow qualities, um, that's, uh, can mean you have a yellow allergy and um, you say yellow is just stuck in their mind. They're not connected to their heart. Um, they're interested in ideas like spiral dynamics. So one criticism green will have of yellow is, oh, you're so interested in spiral dynamics. You're so interested in psychology and science, but y'all, you're just so stuck in your mind and you're just trying to create all these hierarchies and you're not really connected to your heart. You're not connected to the present moment. Well, yeah, that, that's a, in some cases a valid criticism. Sometimes that's true, but yellow green doesn't understand that the, all of these not all these models and all this knowledge and wisdom that's actually practically useful and very applicable for doing high quality personal degre development growth for yourself and also for um the society as well for being a leader all right so some practices uh for integrating yellow in a healthy way in your life would be first of all to uh, really understand what's being talked about in this video going within yourself and seeing where you have addictions to certain stages, where you see you have allergies to other stages, and just to kind of learn about that. Learn about spiral dynamics more deeply and more depth. I've only given you a sweeping overview. On actualize.org, Leo Gora has an awesome series where he really talks for free for over 15 hours about every single spiral stage, how it looks, all the qualities, um, all the practical implications, examples, tons of examples, and then how to move and transcend to the next stage. So learning about spiral dynamics more deeply is a great way to integrate your stage yellow. Also, I'm going to be making my own series in the future, but I'm not really in a hurry to do that right now. Um, so you can stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, so study meta sources is a great way to integrate stage yellow. So study yellow and turquoise information. Like Ken Wilber, in my opinion, is um, by far the most uh, important meta source to study because he really weaves together all these strands together and, and uh, helps you really understand what's going on here on the big picture level. Other meta sources would be like actualize.org is, is a great one. And... Um, some uh, spiritual teachers as well have uh, some great meta models of reality. So you can check that out. Um, yeah, so uh, other good ways to integrate your yellow would be to build your leadership skills as well. Learn how to be a leader, not by demonizing other people and telling them that they suck, but by understanding what stage they're at and then helping to facilitate their growth upwards. That's very important. Also studying um, studying coaching. Coaching is, is the way where you basically guide people towards higher levels of development. If they're having a problem in their relationship, learn the actual practice of coaching because there's a specific way that it needs to be done where you're, you hold a lot of space for the person and you very gently guide them to their own conclusion. There's a big learning curve there that I've been learning uh, as I practice uh, over the last six months. So there's a giant lear learning curve there, but coaching is a great skill. Learning how to guide people is a great way to in integrate your yellow. Also, um, allow yourself to be a creative visionary. I think this is very important. Having some kind of visionary life purpose where 
you, you see how you're going to transform the consciousness of all of humanity. This is a very, very important way to integrate your stage yellow. Spend a lot of time journaling. Actually think about, okay, so what am I going to do with my life? How am I going to help to elevate the consciousness of mankind and be practical about it? So in the future, I'm actually going to be making another video. It's going to be called something like how to turn your passion into a career, something like that, where it actually helps you create some kind of life calling or mission. And then that helps um, you, once you have that vision, then you can actually create a practical plan to get there, which is what I do with my clients on one-on-one -on -one coaching. But I want to actually make a video about it so that I can be accessible to more people for free. All right, um, so be a creative visionary, have a life purpose, and also exercise non-judgment. So there is no need to judge the other stages. Really what it means to be fully integrated in yellow is to enter being cognition as opposed to deficiency cognition, which is where you feel like uh, you're really connected to your ego. There's a lot of lack in the world. Um, you're demonizing and judging other people as being evil and stupid and asleep. Right? Instead of demonizing and judging other people, instead exercise your understanding muscle. So there's no need to judge other people. It's better just to understand other people. Understand their psychology. Understand politics. Don't just pick a political opinion and then just like just, just believe it because it seems right, even though you haven't actually studied it deeply. Actually, do some research. Study politics, economics, see how it works. <laughs> Instead of just believing whatever you read on, on the internet, actually buy a book, read political theory. It takes time. <laughs> a lot of people, they use the word communism, but you don't even know what communism is. You ever read Karl Marx? You actually know what his position was? Right? Most people don't. Now, um, obviously, don't confuse me here. I don't, I'm not interested in communism. I don't want the world to turn into a communism. But I'm just saying many people use the word communism, but they don't know what it means. Right? So yellow uh, really takes its understanding of the world seriously. Doubting yourself. Realize, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Be humble. Be intellectually humble. Question everything. Every single thing. Question it. And there's a lot more points I could go into, but really my whole channel here is about how to integrate your yellow uh, in an effective and healthy way. I've given you some points here. I talk about it a lot in my other videos, so I'm not going to make this video unnecessarily long, even though it's probably already like two hours long. Um, but besides that, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was how to integrate all of the stages uh, of spiral dynamics within yourself so that you can become a harmonious person. You can see where in your life you're addicted to certain aspects or where you're allergic and avoiding other aspects. And just by having this awareness, this helps you to really grow a lot quicker, right? So Ken Wilber says that these models are psychoactive. And the reason why is because by having this awareness, now you are in the position to have a much easier time to grow and develop yourself because now you have a good intellectual, mental understanding of the actual map of growth. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about a lot uh, more of those kinds of concepts in the future, stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Also, I'm going to be talking a lot more about psychedelics as well and uh, how you can use that to uh, kind of supercharge this growth process. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're interested in psychedelics, which I know many of you are, then I got some awesome, awesome, awesome material on the way for you. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you in the next video. Um, if you haven't already watched my other video about uh, spiral dynamics, the intro to spiral dynamics, um, right over here where I give you a brief cursory overview of all the stages. Keep in mind, it's a brief introduc introduction. Really, we can talk about this model for the next 30 hours. And I will make more content about it in the future. But uh, for now, that's all we got. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment, some feedback, what you liked, what you didn't like. And uh, besides that, I'll see you in the next video.